let us let us begin with some centering and finding ourselves on the chair happily you may need to shift forward you may need to move back so that your feet are happily on the floor so that the floor is rising to meet your feet and that the, the chair is rising to meet the back of your legs and the buttocks and the behind area of your knees crook of your knees is soft which allows your and also allows your belly to be soft and the hip creases here to be soft which then in turn with that soft belly the belly being soft and surrendering to the cradle of the abdomen and the pelvis that allows the lower back to be expansive and the hands will just let them rest on the lap face up if that feels comfortable for you and if you need to put a pillow underneath your your uh arms so that you have a little <laughs> less tension in your shoulders or the crick of your elbow perfect do whatever you need to do to create more space and just notice allow yourself to notice the gentle waves of the breath as they naturally move into the body and then they naturally find their way out you may notice as each wave comes in that it brushes up again some area of the body you can actually take any area of the body and there's a change with the sensation of the breath moving in breath moving out but whatever you happen to notice whatever your attention happens to fall upon allow your attention to rest there that could be the changing of intensity of the contact between the back of your thighs and the chair or pressure across the lower back from the inside pushing against the lower back gently or on the inside of the ribs or under the shoulder blades or you might just go for that sensation of the air as it gently rushes past the nostril and the nose skin and rushes out again Let your brain cells be soft as your attention melts into that sensation, whatever that sensation is that you allowed your attention to fall on. Brain cells melt the down into the body, gently sending into the body. Eyes are soft. Mouth. And from a spaciousness under the arms and a reaching gentle gentle wave of reaching up through the lower upper back under the arms the arms find themselves in elevation over your head as a consequence and then if you can they come overhead if you can't they are as high as you can comfortably go and then the palms find each other as they descend in front of the chest the thumbs touching the sternum 
and then the skin of the sternum, just gently pressing up into the thumbs. So it's like a tiny blossoming of the chest. As the underarms remain soft, and the chin softens gently toward the chest, As the brain cells quiet into the chest, and notice the sensation between the sternum and your thumb or your hands on the chest. If your hands cannot come together, that's perfectly fine. If they can't come together, you can rest your hands on your chest. Or, your, or whatever part of your hands are able to touch the chest. And we'll do three ohms together, and I will cue by saying, inhale. The sensation, getting full attention from the brain cells between the chest and the thumbs. back to a normal gentle breath and inhale Are you, how are you with shifting weight from one, one sit bone to the other? Uh, it depends. It's, it just depends. It, I'll, I'll try it. Okay, but you'll, I want you to let me know um, if, the, if you need any adjustment that, you, that you're not able to find for yourself. Because I, okay. I know you're very good at making um, kind of, <laughs> fair adjustments to approximate the, the, right. the positions. But if you're getting frustrated, just let me know, okay? Okay, thanks. If it's not right, okay. Um, so we'll take, first of all, um, again, Ordva Hastasan with the arms rising up out of the back, up along the side, body trickling across the yawning underarms. And if you can, allow the the hands to touch and to interlock. If you can't manage that the hands actually connect here, you can grab you can grab a pillow or you can grab a towel or a strap. Okay? And um, I will work with a pillow today. Um, so, if you can, the arms rise up through the side and back body as the underarms gently yawn, but the meaty, meaty parts of the shoulder stay soft and the back of the neck is soft. If you can, the hands find each other and they have a gentle interlock. And then if you can, the palms turn up and out to the ceiling. We've not gotten this far yet before, but you guys are doing great. So that your palms, whether you're holding a pillow 
or whether your fingers are interlocked, are facing up towards the ceiling whilst maintaining all the softness through the body. And it, it is too difficult to do that to just stay with, with palms facing in instead of out. And inhale, and then the arms find their way down. And then rest. Put the pillow in the lap or whatever you have in your lap, just for one second. And now what you're going to do is you're going to imagine that there are little angels puffing up your, your underarms, up, out and up, soft, soft, soft. And then they are allowing the underarms to puff out and down. Almost imperceptibly, and then and now just allow yourself to be here and land in the sensation across your chest and under your arm and your side body. And once again, whatever prop you're using, use that prop. And I'm gonna again use the the cushion. And so Urdhva Hastasan trickling up through the side body, the back of the body, through the underarms, as the hands, wherever you, the hands can meet, if it's in front of the body or above the head, that's perfectly fine. And what we're doing here is, in this very challenging position, we're practicing the softness of our belly into the this beautiful cradle of the abdomen and pelvis. Well, and soft abdomen, soft underarms, soft hip creases. And if you're able to interlock your fingers, and if you're able to, then extend as much as you can. You don't have to turn your palms up, but if you can, it's another layer of challenge. In Ulpa Guliasana. Beautiful and arm inside the elbows soften as the wrists turn if you've had them turning out and the arms again descending and then once again as if you've got if you've got heavenly puffing machines up under your arms you find that the shoulder blades and the underarms arise up and out as the next day soft and softly, the puffing machine lets the underarms land down and out. And once again, up. And then the underarms unpuff down and out. Beautiful. Um, so what I'd like to do is um, hands. If, if you have trouble opening your hands, you can use the heel of your hand on the chair. Um, or you can grab the side of the chair, or you can put your hands flat on the chair, whichever one. Or if you have uh, trouble with any of those, other things, is to take um, socks and, and, and put them, if your hands are curled, you can place them in, in the, in the, in the uh, inside of the hands and then use, use those as the cushion which, which you can support yourself through your arms. And I will do that for today. So um, what I'm doing is I'm going to put my hands on the back of the chair and I'm going to just gently soften the elbows so I lean back. And then what we're going to do now is allow this left leg to softly bend, soften under the knee to bring this up to the right knee and just stay here for a moment. Modeling 
you can to keep the back of the knees soft but long and the belly soft and you're taking the weight of your back with the back of the chair so you so it shouldn't be strength too strenuous but you will feel that the that the abdomen is engaged the core is gently engaged and what where your eyes are they're kind of cast to the corner of the ceiling where the corner where the ceiling meets the wall and now allow the eyes to come down and the knee to lengthen back of the knee to lengthen and then allow yourself to come back up to sitting Take a moment here to just be in your belly, in the softness of your belly. Beautiful. Now let's flow into the other side. So again, hands for uh, security and for some gentle support through your arms. Hands come to the chair as from the hip creases, soft hip creases, the upper back leans into the chair as the as the both of the legs, the knees, the knees extend out like a yawn, and then the right knee softens behind. I think, am I doing this right or am I doing the same side again? To the knee. What comes to the knee? Make sure it's the other one, whatever the other one is. It comes to the knee. And here you are again. The backrest of your chair is holding, your, holding you across the top of your back, your shoulders, as your gaze is in the corner where the ceiling and the wall meet. So your neck is soft, the back of your neck is soft, and then you just allow the gentle breath to move in and to move out. And so we have a sort of reclining tree pose, soft belly, and it's not quite, it's a, a rikshasana. It's a rikshasana, which is a tree pose. Okay, and then as Eyes uh, come forward, the knee softens to lengthen, and then the knee soften to bend as we gently find our way back to sitting. Okay. Now let us do this. For those who want to stay sitting, can you please do this again? For those uh for those comfortable standing, we're going to go to the wall, if you can see me. So to the wall, or if you have some steady furniture, if you don't, you have to take a chair and press it up against something that does not move. Um, so stepping towards your wall or the furniture that doesn't move, <laughs> um, you're, we're shifting our weight onto the left foot. Feel the softness in the spine and softness in the hip crease as there's a softness behind the right knee as the heel peels off the floor. And wherever you are, wherever you can go, whether it's the ankle, whether it's the toe still staying on the floor, the ball of the foot still staying on the floor, and we just stay here for a moment. You can do a half namaskar if you like here. And again, it's that same sensation of the softness in the belly with the gentle tone in the core that just gently moves in but doesn't overtake. And notice the difference between having more weight on the heel so that the bones actually create create the, uh, the, the scaffolding and structure of the pose as opposed to uh, 
which is not wrong, but opposed to the weight shifting a bit forward on the foot or even more forward. And then you can feel like the front of the muscles engage and it becomes a much more uh, muscularly active pose. And then on the next inhale, you can let the arm release and then let the right leg release to standing. And just stand here for a moment and notice the difference between these two legs. Great. And on the next inhale, find yourself in the direction that you need to do the other side so that we flow into the other side. So we have the feet. Oops, oops. The feet not too far away from each other. And we allow the weight to shift onto our standing right leg softness behind the left leg so that there's a gentle bend in both the knee and this gentle hip crease as the heel peels off the floor and you can stay right here if you want or further softening of this hip crease and further softening behind the knee can bring the foot to the ankle even deeper even deeper softening can bring the foot to below the knee. And again, you can manage a half namaskar. And again, when we're doing this namaskar, just like in the centering that we did, we feel the thumb at the sternum, and then we feel the skin across the sternum rising, gently rising acknowledging that thumb and then what happens is we have a little bit of a gentle quiet blossom and radiance in that chest while maintaining a softness in the belly and creases and notice your gentle breath as it moves in and as it moves out and next Inhale, the arm gently finds its way down and the hip crease and knee creases soften to extension. And just notice yourself here, right now. Feel the difference between these two legs. Beautiful. G, are you managing okay on the, the chair? Yes. Good. Oh, wrong person. No, you, 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 you. Yes, yes, yes. I'm doing fine. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, we're going to do this one more time. Um, and this time we're going to, if you're in the chair, you're going to stay in the chair if, if you need the chair. Uh, we'll do it another time. But this time we're going to add, um, put, we're folks, if you're in the chair, Please use both hands to keep yourself supported, even though that the even though that the back of the chair is holding you across the back of your shoulders. Still right, give the support of your your arms, your upper extremities. So um, ignore when I say half namaskar, full namaskar, or urvastasana. Okay. All right. So here we go. One more time. You feel the weight. To those standing, weight is shifting to the standing leg, the left leg, as behind the knee and the hip crease are gently softening. And you can stay right here with the heel peeled off the floor, or those joints can further deepen in the softening so that the foot is brought to the ankle or even a deeper softening, such that the foot is drawn higher up on that standing leg. Beautiful. Here, we're both standing. Again, allow, we're gonna do half, 
Ardhvahastasana for the moment. So again, the arm initiated from the back through the upper arm as high as comfortable for you to go. And palms are facing in. If you're comfortable, you can have the left hand join the outside hand, either just up, or this is very hard to do or touching. So I would say just keep your palms facing so that your chest is soft, so your underarms are soft and the belly is soft. If you can do this, that's fine. Or half of Urdhva Hastasana is perfectly fine also. And you look straight ahead. Beautiful. And with an inhale, the arms gently come down. Leg unfolds in extension. Notice how this feels, whether you're sitting or standing, the difference. And then we will flow to the other side. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. So again, we find our happy Tadasana. So we have a mountain breeze through our belly, across our lower back. We are strong, but we are soft. As the weight gently shifts to the right, and in so doing, there's a softness that moves in behind the knee and into the hip crease as the heel naturally peels off the floor. Now you can stay here, or you can allow that back of the knee joint and the hip crease to deepen softening to deepen so you can draw that foot up wherever you get to happen to be follow up the leg and again the thing that we're practicing is the softness of the belly the softness of these hip creases and the, and behind the knee and then the rest of the body the true core rises to meet the body's knee and take with the outside arm, Ordvahastasan, half of Ordvahastasan. And then if you want, you can take full Ordvahastasan. Beautiful. And with an inhale, again, you inhale, the chest gently moves up to rise to the sun. And exhale, and then inhale, the arms come down, and the leg extends softly into the ground. And just notice here how the body feels any spaciousness that might have been created across the chest. Even if you're sitting, there's an opening across the chest. The form of the if you're standing, you should still feel it from having done Ordva Hastasana. You might notice that there's a difference. Beautiful. Uh, any observations? No. no. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I know that you will be vocal. I trust that you will be vocal. Okay, terrific. Um, I would like to do uh, um, eagle pose. Um, so from seated or standing, whatever is more comfortable for you, we're going to let the arms fly out and remember that this is a beautiful spaciousness under the arms and so what happens now is the, the right arm is going to come under the left arm like this 
and this is called e, this is e glucose. And notice the difference here. Can you see what's happening? So the elbows are resting in each other. Ultimately, it's going to look like this. Um, but for now, this is fine. If you can get here, that's fine. But I don't want anything being compromised. So that means the softness of your belly, the softness behind your bottom and on the top of your back thigh and your belly. And notice where your chest is. Notice where the breath has gone to. It's different. And on the inhale, arms gently rise, and then let them rise out, extending out to the walls behind you, and then just allow them to come rest for a moment. And notice the difference in your shoulders. And again, the wind rushes up your sides and your back. Underarms are open as the arms from underneath are extending out to the sky. As this time, the right, the left crook of the elbow comes underneath the right. And you can stay right here. Or again, you can allow the, the fingers of the, of the other hand to rest inside the palm of the right hand. Mm -hmm. Notice how the breath has changed here. Notice where you want where you want to hold, where you want to tighten. And inhale. Arms gently rise from underneath the underarms and relax. Let them rise and fall now. Good. Observations. That one's kind of hard. It was. Yeah. And um, it is very challenging. Um, for many people in the beginning um, because it challenges your breath and it challenges one to try to stay integrated in terms of being sensitive to one's belly and not closing down in other areas. So what we're doing is and what the purpose of this is in terms of yoga and in terms of cardiopulmonary health is to allow the breath to move to the parts of the body that are open because in everyday life we have positions and we have activities that challenge the shape and the geometry of our chest and our thorax which changes our breathing and so um, the more we practice these challenging positions uh, the more we're able to send the breath and allow the breath to go where it's not going to be impeded in terms of the changing um, geometry of the upper torso, if you see what I'm saying, yeah? And, um, and, and this can be challenging for folks that have uh, shoulder issues. And then once again, um, folks go as to the extent to where their body's wisdom tells them is appropriate for them and also what's happening is is that we're learning to be more mobile in the chest and then and, and in the back body and when that happens we can allow more freedom because in into the shoulders because we have the rest of the body the more core part of the body supporting the shoulders um, and I just was rabbiting on like this to give you guys a chance to rest. <laughs> good, 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 go on, tell us more. So, so as you know, everything that we do is, is learning how to breathe in different positions and how to 
develop the muscles to support a better breathing mechanism. Um, and so having said that, friends, let us move on. So um, now, Gail, um, uh, in terms of standing, it's a no-go really for you. Am I right to say that? Well, I mean, I can stand. I but just it's too painful though, right? Right. I mean, I can try it though. I'll try anything. Mm. I can no. try it. No, I'd like you to stay sitting. And what we're going to do is um um I'm going to we everybody do this first one together, which is uh does everyone have two chairs? Mhm. Mm um and uh I think um, I think Sharon, you can use your chair and your desk for this, um, mm -hmm. and then we're going to move up to standing. And then, folks that are more comfortable sitting, then what we'll do is um, continue in this the sitting asana. So, but actually, guess what? Because of the hurricane, I have these chairs in here. <laughs> So we'll use, I'll use this chair and this chair. Um, and Miss Chair Anne has a desk. I think she doesn't have two chairs. So, oh, I know I have another chair. Okay. 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 So, so sitting here, um, arms come up to Ordva Hasasan, as, as high as you can. If it's here, it's here, right? And then we just allow the hip creases to soften. I hope you can see. Hip creases to soften, belly stays soft. And so what we're feeling is the skin across our lower back expands as we go down. Now, if this is too low for some folks because of breathing issues, you can grab blankets or uh, pillows so that you're not too far down because your breathing is going to be challenged in this position. Or, or if you need it higher than that, you can use the back of the chair. So, uh, so Urdhva Hasasana, soft belly, soft hip, hip creases as the arms extend outward. And from here, what we're going to do is burp, 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 burp. the hands are on the back of the chair, arms stretching outward, and you go as, as slow as you need to go. And what we're going to do is from here, we're going to allow the pelvis to tilt onto the thigh as the chest rises and we're looking in front of us. To allow the belly to still surrender, please, if possible, to the to the cradle of the pelvis. And then we're going to come back again, stretching out. Into downward facing dog or Vishva Shanatna. And then once again, the chest lifts. As, as the upper body pulls out gently from the from the side hips, but the belly stays soft, so we're not overtaxing the back. Because this is about again the chest radiating forward. Okay, let's try that again. Shake out if you've been shake out if you've been uh, practicing with me. Just give yourself a chance to. Okay. So. Arms, or Hastasin, soft underarms, soft uh, hip creases, soft belly, expansive into the back. And we're doing, we're doing or Shvatnas, which is downward facing dog. Neck is long, underarms are soft. And now you're going to feel that. As the chest moves forward and up, so does the weight on the sit bone. 
as you try, and the back of your thighs as you try to allow the belly to stay soft so you don't overextend the lower back. And then back to the back. And then soft. Uh, we're going to come out of this in a different way. Soft, just back to the top of the knee. Okay. Um, how was that? Good. It's okay. Okay. Good. Hi, Chris. Hi. Sorry, I'm late. No, it's good to see you. So, um, Gail, are, is this a happy uh, combination of props for you? Yeah, it's pretty happy. It's pretty happy? Okay, and you adjust as you need. So, right. Every, so, everyone else that can manage off the chairs, we're going to find a wall if you can. If you can do the wall. Does everyone have a wall? And yeah. if not, I, I, uh, you would have to get a sturdy chair. And that sturdy chair will have to be wedged against some bit of furniture that's not movable. Okay? So, and we begin. We are about arm's distance from the wall or the table. If you can see me, this way. Wall or the table, uh, or the wall or the chair. <laughs> and then we're going to walk back to, we're going to walk back to Ordva Shvanasana. Step back and look at our toes. And I would say don't go too far back because we're going to do the, we're going to do the Ordva Shvanasana. We're going to do the, um, uh, Uh, upward facing dog, sorry. So again, our sit bones are traveling out to the wall behind us, neck is long, underarms are soft, soft, soft. And then, if you can, soft in the belly, soft, softness in the hip creases as the position of the sit bone translates forward, just like in the chair, and the sternum rises, and you're kind of just gently with the natural position of looking just a little bit up. And that's it. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and then exhale as the arms, underarms soften and lengthen as the sit bones. Now travel back out to the wall behind you. Under our yawn and open, soft. Lower back. And then we'll go one more time with this quiet moving of the hip, sit bones, softening of the hip bones, softening of the belly as sternum rise. And then inhale, yeah. and exhale, we find ourselves in Ardha Mukha Shavasana, one more time. And then we watch our toes as our knees gently soften and we walk one, twice, close to the wall, elbows softening, we walk safe up against the wall. Arms down. Um, do you guys want to try that again? Yeah, um, that's a good, that's a, that's a yes. yes. That's a yes. <laughs> okay, and the reason for it, because can you feel that what's happening is, is that we, we are, we, yes, we are challenging this integration as we're shifting from, from downward dog to upward dog, but it's a coordination and it's just that we're trying to manage to stay soft. And we are, we are requiring a different 
a different extreme of mobility. Oops. Um, my computer's saying, feed me. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so we're requiring a different, a different up through here with the upward facing dog. And, and this mobility here is so important. The ability for the upper arm drop to, again, have the structures around it soften, but be strong to hold and support it so that the upper back can be mobile. And again, and notice how I'm giving you guys a break, some break time. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Which this upward, upward mobility of the chest and of this spinal column and all of the structures, the muscles, the ligaments, the tendons, that attach to be soft is very important to accommodate changes in geometry of the thorax that can impact how efficiently we use the breath. So one more time. And we to the wall. And again, we're just about arm's length away from the wall hands to the wall and again if you have difficulty um, with, with your hands if they don't if they don't flatten if your palms don't flatten you can again use socks um, in your your hands um, so again we look down at our feet step once out step twice out and remember because we're doing ordva um, because we're doing ordva mukhasavasana upward facing dog we don't want to step too far away as if we were only doing auto mukha shavasana, which is the downward facing dog. Because we want to add to this. Make sure you're comfortable. If you need to step in a little bit more, that's perfectly fine. Soft under the underarms. Underarms are yawning, and the uh, again the abdomen is soft, which allows the sit bones to be long, and the skin on the lower back to to spread in all directions, as there's a gentle shifting that happens of the sit bones, the direction of the sit bones is now not out against the wall, but it's moving in towards the floor and the natural consequence of the body and the chest is to bring the sternum to this beautiful, gentle softness behind the neck, length behind the neck, and again, inhale and then exhale allows the body to move back into Adho Mukha Shavasana, downward facing dog. And one more time. Inhale as the sit bones shift direction. Beautiful spaciousness under the arms. Lovely. Inhale and then exhale as the sit bones shift back to point across the room to the wall behind you. Soft belly. And again, this is a never ending conversation with many levels each movement. And then noticing your feet behind the knees, soft and gently as one foot steps in, another foot steps in. And when you feel safe, you can look up at the wall. And you can step away from the wall. Awesome. That is really tough. Good job. Great. Um, so, how is everybody doing? Fine. Fine. Okay, great. Beautiful. So, um, uh, let's all go back to the to sitting. Um, because we're going to practice Utkatasana in the chair. Utkatasana is mighty pose. It's also called chair pose. Um, and and, and in its, it, it's close to its full expression. It looks like this. Soft hip creases, soft knees. Um, the, behind, the, behind the lower back, the skin is spreading in all 
um, directions. And you can just do it. And that's the full expression. We're going to do it here. Um, see my reference? <laughs> my, my blueberry kind bar. Um, you can start here. And what we're going to do is from here, we're going to allow the, sit, the knees to soften right angles here. The hip creases soften as the belly stays soft. Belly stays soft so the lower back can continue to expand as, as this hip crease softens and deepens. It's not easy. It's not easy. Feel the breath back in, in, in your, across the back of your lower back. Across the back of your back. Notice it. And if you can, the arms come up toward the hastasana. It's not easy. You can do it. This is why it's called Mighty Pose. And now look what we're doing. We're involving the underarms, the chest that we've been working on today, and the softness of the belly and the deepening of the hip creases, as we did in Brikshasana Tree Pose. And then, now, all together the body shifts back so the sit bones are now pointing into the chair, and the arms come down to your side. Now just notice what you're feeling. Notice the expanse across the chest, the expanse under your arms if you happen to notice that, the expanse underneath the shoulder blade tips. And whether or not the softness of your belly is staying in the conversation. Let me try again. Now we try again, we, we move into the pose again. So we can do with our hands, palms on our laps to make it easy. Elbows are soft, back of the knees are soft, belly is soft as these hip creases soften and deepen. And as we're moving through to softening and deepening, we are keeping an open door for our belly to stay soft so that our lower back stays lovely and expansive. And with the next breath under the arms, the, the arms rise up out of the back. Woo, it's hard work. Uh -huh. and, and if you can keep these, if you can keep these humpy humpy bits soft too, woohoo! It's a conversation. And then inhale. Ah, exhale and the body moves back down again and three times is the charm. So just sit here for a moment because we're going to do it a third time. You guys are awesome. Super awesome. Did I say awesome? I'm super, super, super. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And here we go again. Remember, this is not just about pose. I know you know this. But I'm just reminding you so that you can remind your inner demons that it is not about the end pose. It's about the means, the means of getting there and the conversation we're allowing the body to have with itself in terms of this listening, this endless listening and responsiveness so that the body can stay in a good place or at least it can find, it can keep refinding a happier place for itself. Okay. Soft under the arms, belly, soft hip creases, as the body finds its way, listens forward, as the belly listens forward into the hip creases, deepen, and then in Urdhva, Stasen, come the arms, and gently can look up, somewhere three quarters of up the wall, or halfway up the wall, depending on how tall your walls are. This is very demanding on the breath and the body. And you guys are awesome. The softness and elongation and yawning under the arms. Inhale. Ah, exhale. There we go. Beautiful. Take a moment to just land and feel where you are right now.
Any comments? No. No. Nope. Okay, good. Do you guys want to do a little bit of chanting for the rest of our time? Yeah, I like the chants. <laughs> yeah, okay. So let's do that together. <laughs> okay, so we'll do... Um, this is a this is a Buddhist chant, but it's like very universal. It's um, Omani Padme Hum, and I can't remember if we've done this in this in these sessions or not. So it's um, I'll I'll sing it out once. It's Omani Padme. And you take a breath wherever you need to. That's perfectly fine. And if you keep the sounds, if you keep the exuberance in the mouth, um, so that you're able to, so that you're able to enjoy the breath and the sounds in the mouth, rather than um, feeling that you need to express the air out to sing, that helps with developing more control of air when we speak. So let's tr let's try the first phrase together. Uh, and you can sway if you want. And the first phrase is Om Let me go lower. <clears throat> Om Good. Again. Oh. Hey. Beautiful. Again. Oh. Hey. Okay. Good. And then the next one is. <laughs> How do we go home over here? Oh, Molly, me, you pardon me. All right, let's just do it all together. Is that okay? I think you guys will get it, right? Oh, my. have you got it? Let's try the whole thing together just to mark it. Ready? Because it's hard to divide. It's hard for me to divide up. Somebody more experienced at leading chant could probably do a better job. But let's try it together. Oh, you can take a breath here. Padme. Beautiful. Again. Oh, Good. We'll try it again. Oh, Great. Now let's do it. Let's do it a few times together, starting from allowing the breath to move over you. You can allow your hands to rest in your lap. You can allow your hands to be out and open like this if it's comfortable. If you need a pillow for your hands to rest on, please get one. I'll just let my hands be out so I can practice being soft under my arms and so I can practice being open in my chest. And we begin. Inhale. Oh. 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 I. Amen. 
beautiful. And I'm sorry that the Zoom can't let us all chant together without the very, the very difficult. But allow, if you can, the palms to come together and we'll do three ohms. Inhale. And inhale. One last inhale. Lovely. That was beautiful. And may every little piece of movement, stretch of movement, swath of movement that we do, no matter what it is, whether it's moving the mouse, whether it's moving a chair, whether it's washing a plate, whether it's practicing a yoga asana, that every little movement that we do contributes to the peace and healing of the world and those that are experiencing strife right now for whatever reason. And we think of the folks in West Louisiana and East Texas. Namaste, good people. Thank you for this beautiful time. It meant so much to me. It's so good for me. Thank you. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. People. Thank you. See you later. Okay. See, see you later. And uh, don't hesitate to contact me with any questions. Okay. I will. And, uh, and dance is on tomorrow at 1 p.m. or I think that's 7 p.m. UK time at 8 p.m. CET. So I've got two plumbers tomorrow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Take care, everyone. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.